Hi everyone, welcome back to Stamp with Anna, and today I'm going to show you another technique using the Stamparatus. We're going to make a card, it's very, very similar to this, except it's going to be a Halloween, not a Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving card. And we're going to use the Stamparatus in order to make this perfect circle wreath. So let me bring in the Stamparatus. This is Stampin' Up's stamp placement tool, and it is worth its weight in gold. It has two plates, and each plate obviously has two sides. So you can theoretically use, have four different stamps that you are stamping at the same time to get all your placement perfect. The bottom of it has a grid on it, just like the grid paper that Stampin' Up sells. And you will use this surface if you're going to use a red rubber stamp. And it also comes with this foam pad that you use if you're going to use a photopolymer stamp set. You get the cushion from the foam and you also get a little lift. On, I'm going to take one plate off because we're only using one. On the back, there are these two little slots here. And they house these very, very strong magnets. I have mine wrapped in painter's tape so that I have a good grip on them. It's easier for me to take them on and off their place. Now you really do want to try very hard not to have these come together. They're very difficult to take apart if they do um, and they may break. So I'm going to put them aside. So let's get started and I'll explain all of the um, measurements for the paper as I'm going along rather than take up time at the beginning of the video. So this is the uh, the plate we're going to use and I have a piece of paper here that I have cut five by five and this is what I used to make my template. Now what I did was I took from the layering squares thinlets, I took the largest square and I die cut it out like this. Then I came back in and I set it this way and I cut it out and that gave me my template. And this template is the key to making the wreath. So I'm going to bring in my magnets. I'm going to put one here and one here. God, these are really, really strong. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of very vanilla. And this is cut at 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. And you'll see that it fits in that square perfectly. Okay. Make sure I have the clean side of my paper. I have a little smudge on it. I just want to get a better... Oh my goodness, this is really, really strong. I'm going to get a better grip right there. Okay, so this is going to go right here, and it fits right in there. Now I'm going to take my little circle, my little flower, and I'm going to place that right there in the center. Okay. And I'm going to bring my plate down, press, and now my stamp is mounted. So I'm going to bring in my crushed curry stamp, stamp pad, and I'm going to ink this up. Now, if I don't have room here just because my video camera is set up, but if you had, if you were on a table and you were used, you had all the, the room in the world, you could take your, your case, your stamp pad case, and just lay that underneath it so that you have a nice firm surface. Um, I think you can still see everything online. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp that up and I'm going to come down and press. And the beauty of this is if I didn't get a good impression, I can come back and stamp again. And now I have a great impression. Now I'm going to take this, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to turn it. Again, making sure that it's flat. I want to skip that circle because I'm using two different colors. I'm going to stamp that up again and I'm going to press. I'm going to do it again. Again, lining it up so that it's straight across. 
stamp, press, and one last time. Stamp, and press, and there we go. So now I have all of my crushed curry flowers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that stays in the same position. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to wipe that off. Now I'm going to bring in my pumpkin pie. And I'm going to move this paper so that now when I line it up, I'm going to put the paper in with the top corners. So I'm going to stamp that up in pumpkin pie, come on down, and press. I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to bring that up in that corner again, and press. One more time, and press, and then the last time. and press. And now I'm going to remove this. Now, you will see these are not exactly spaced perfectly. And the reason that is so is when I made my template, I didn't measure. I just laid this down and then came back in and laid this down. And if you'll notice, this here there is less space on this side than there is on this side. So therefore, my flowers are not exactly even. And that's the way I wanted this particular card to go. On another card, I may want it to be exact. In that case, I would certainly use my grids as, my, as, a, measure, as a way of measuring. And I would make sure this is centered just perfectly. But because of the way I designed my card, you see, in between... These two flowers, there's two leaves, and in between this, these two flowers is only one. And that's the way I wanted my card designed. But if it called for, my design called for the, them to be perfectly spaced, I would make sure that these, that this was perfectly centered when I made my template. So, now I'm going to bring in a pierce mat because I'm going to do my leaves. And I've mounted my tiny little leaf on this on this block and I'm going to bring in my old olive. Now where there's a small space in between my flowers I'm just going to bear with me one second here I just want to clean the stamp off because it fell off my block. Where there's one st one smaller space, I'm going to put one leaf. And no rhyme or reason, I'm just going to go in there and drop it in. Now where there's a larger space, I'm going to do two leaves. But I'm going to make one at full strength. I'm going to move my one second one up a little and stamp second generation. So I have two different um, colors there. And that adds a little bit of dimension to my card. And this goes very quickly. Done. How quick and simple was that? Now we're just going to put it together. I'm going to mount this on a piece of pumpkin pie that is cut three by three. And just center that right there. Small little border. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of very vanilla that is cut at three and three quarters by five. And I'm going to run it through this embossing folder. It's called the Petal Burst. I'm going to go do that off camera. I'll be right back my embossed piece. I just love this. So I'm going to mount this piece, my embossed piece, onto another piece of pumpkin pie 
which is cut at 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and 1 eighth. And all of these measurements will be on my blog. And now I'm going to mount this whole piece onto my card base, which is Old Olive, and it is cut at 4 and a quarter by 11, scored at, at 5 and a half. So I'm going to just center that right there. And now I'm going to put this wreath up there. And right in the middle. Now on this sample card that I made here, you can see I stamped for you right there. But I want this to be a Thanksgiving card. So what I am going to do is I have a scrap piece of crushed curry and using some soft suede ink, and I have this stamp, it says Happy Thanksgiving, and this is from a retired set, I do apologize, I don't like to use retired uh, products on my, my videos, because you might not have it, and you want it, and you can't get it, but I'm sure that one of the new um, stamp sets that's in the fall winter catalog has a Happy Thanksgiving um, sentiment. So, I'm going to stamp that on this piece right there. And then I'm going to use the classic label punch and punch this out. And now I'm going to take this and using some mini dimensionals, I'm going to pop this up. put this right across the center here. And the last thing I'm going to do is I made a bow out of some twine because I wanted it to have a little rustic look. And I'm going to attach that with a glue dot. I'm going to put that right about here. And our card is done. And this Really, you saw how quickly it went once you got it going. The wreath looks looks great. So here it is in some... These colors here are the new in colors. Call Me Clover and um, Grapefruit Grove. And the inks here are Grapefruit Grove, Call Me Clover, and Lovely Lipstick. And this is a piece of 1 8 uh, inch Lovely Lipstick. But there it is in a nice bright color for any occasion. And here it is in some more fall colors for Thanksgiving. Now I also made the Thanksgiving version of it using from the Swirly Bird stamp set, which I have here somewhere. Here it is. Using this small little cir circle there and I made it into a flower. And I like that too. That's a little more um, modern, I guess. But it's um, same card, just a different flower. So I hope that you've enjoyed these, this card and that um, if you do own a stamp apparatus that you will take some time and play with it and find out all the great ways you can use it. I had a class recently and I showed my customers seven, maybe eight different ways that you can use the stamp apparatus. It's lots of techniques, so, uh, and this being one of them. So I hope you will give it a try. If you have any questions about this project or any of the products that I've used, please contact me through my blog, www.stampwithanna.blogspot.com, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. And if you would like a copy of the new fall-winter catalog that um, went live September 5th, certainly let me know, and I'll be glad to pop that into mail, the mail to you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.